We're Emtech, builders of QTAC fire and rescue apparatus. Follow along as we document the construction of our Type 6 demo truck build. Welcome back. This is the second to last installment of our build series for the QTAC Super 6. This is our sales truck that we'll be going out on the road to see customers with. It's also going to be for sale. We'll have full specs and, and pricing information available on our website or available via email if you email sales at qtacfire.com. Our sales team can get that out to you. The last video will be a complete walk around, more of a sales video where we'll show you every component on the truck in its finished state and how it works. Lots of detail work at this point and then finish wiring and programming of the lighting and sirens. The plumbing is installed, it's all powder coated. We've got some fun stuff in here. You've got obviously interior white lighting, clear lighting. And then we threw in a red light as well. That's more, uh, A, if we're at a trade show at this thing, if we go back to trade shows. This would be uh, just for illuminating the rear of the pump compartment. But also at night, red light is gonna be easier on your eyes. So we've got the panel. Waterax B2X, uh, CPI steps, and, and the back of the truck's coming together. Obviously, there's a few pieces still missing. Hard suction doors are missing. Uh, we'll turn on the lights here in a minute, show you some of the lighting that we've got going on. Beneath the steps, we've got off-road lights. This is just for ground illumination. Uh, additional ground illumination along with the 3x7s and the Tomar eyelids. These are the Revolution Series 3x7s here. And then we've got the FRC uh, level gauges. This is an RVS camera system that we got from Safe Fleet. We've got them on the, the rear, obviously for backup, but also on the side of the truck, so you can see what's on the side, see what's on the back, and we'll have it on the front as well. Again, just hitting some of the details, obviously this isn't completely done, there's a latch that's needed, but pump electrical, really easy to access in the side of the compartment, and everything you're gonna need uh, as far as from an electrical standpoint with the pump compartments right here. So we've got the body electrical wrapped up in this compartment, uh, 110, USB power, also 12 volt uh, outlets here. So again, if you're doing mobile, mobile radios and you want to have a charging station, you can do that here. You can hear the, the ventilation, the active ventilation, because the truck's plugged into the Kuzmal right now. And it's just moving air through the body like we talked about before. It's, it doesn't have to be a lot. It's a little air in, little out. You can see here in the pump area, same thing. And if you put your hand over it, it's enough where you can feel the air moving. So again, it's just keeping condensation down. The last video we made, we didn't have the external fascia on, so we've got the top storage boxes, and now we've got a three-piece fascia that's painted. We built some, some flanges on the aluminum to then take the, the scene lights, kick them out vertically, and they're also 13-degree down optics. So you've got scene lights that have a 13-degree down, and uh, it provides a tremendous amount of light, which we'll show in the last video when, we, when we're doing the walk-around. This fascia, the reason that it's not built into the body is we want something that's modular. So again, the goal is if something gets damaged with this truck, if somebody wants to change it, it's, it's, a, it's modular. We're able to move pieces in and around it without having to tear the whole truck apart. That last video we showed you the, the chainsaw mount, the, the pocket that it goes into, and we've added a tool mount. So now, pull it out, and the chainsaw comes out really quickly and easily. We were gonna put the Kuzma on the front fender like we do on a lot of trucks, but with the large fender flares, when it ejects, there's a chance it's gonna eject and then scratch the fender or just having the, the, the cable sit on the fender and, and brush it, it's gonna scratch it. So we fabbed up an aluminum box and there's your Kuzma mount it's out of the way. This way, yeah, you could get some rocks or maybe some brush hitting it, but it's a very sturdy mount. Fender flares are installed, and they're painted and installed. Oftentimes we do these in black, and maybe even with a truck like a bed liner coat, going a little bit different, doing body color. And then when we do the final graphics wrap, we'll probably wrap a black stripe on here just to break it up a little. The, fender, or the, uh, the bumper is powder coated like we talked about last video, installed. Just haven't hooked up the hose yet, but all, all the valving is there. Lots of lighting like we've discussed. We've got floodlights on the outside of this Tomar TRT spots, lots of, of scene lighting, and these are also a tri-colored a tri LED. This is the Tomar eyelid. You got this door. This door comes from buck stop without a, a hinge on it, and that's one thing we didn't care for is because 
every customer we had with this bumper, they, they would go to lift it and this door would fall. It would fall in, it would fall out. And uh, so we just put a hinge on it, turned out clean, looks good. And over here is the Brush Hawk monitor. It's not hooked up yet. That'll be uh, probably end of this week we'll have this hooked up. This is the first Brush Hawk we've used. We've used other brands in the past. This is a remote monitor, joystick controlled in the cab. You can auto start the pump and be pumping water out the monitor um, from the cab without actually stopping the vehicle. One of the most common questions we get is, is there a concern using a plastic body in a fire service application due to the heat that it could be exposed to? The answer is no. Technically, the body could melt, but it wouldn't happen until long after your tires melted and the lights melted and the crew would be in extreme amount of danger at that point. Oftentimes, people think that the plastic we use is, would be similar to what you'd see on a, like a motorcycle gas tank. That's not the case. This is a copolymer plastic. It's heat resistant and we're using it in thicknesses up to three quarter. A lot of half inch and three eighths as well. But using this type of plastic with the construction methods that we do, it would take an extreme amount of heat for a sustained amount of time to do any sort of damage to it.